What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video on the channel today. Week one is officially just a few days away. I could not be more excited. And as a result, I am going to start what I hope to be a weekly series on the channel talking about the best bets in the NFL. Listen, I'm a gambler. I, I do. I, I dabble a little bit here and there. And I just want to kind of give my thoughts on the lines for the week, the best plays, maybe some parlays for you guys. So I'm going to be going through each game, talking about the lines. And at the end, I'm going to give you guys what my pick is for a couple of parlays to maybe win you guys some bread this week. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it, starting with the Baltimore Ravens at the Kansas City Chiefs. The Thursday night opener should be a lot of fun. The Chiefs open as three point favorites against the Baltimore Ravens. And listen, I, I think that that's fair, but I also understand that. You know, last year they opened the year as favorites as well against the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions ended up beating them outright. The Chiefs, I think, are maybe a little susceptible in the beginning of the year, especially right now. You know, Hollywood Brown is banged up. Um, they lost Legereus Steen in the offseason. I think this is also a revenge game for Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. So I don't know if I'm brave enough to pick them to go into Arrowhead and win outright. I will, however, pick them to cover. I'm going to pick the Ravens to go plus three here. I don't normally like going with over under on points unless I feel really strongly about it. 48 and a half seems about right. Um, but hey, if you're braver than me and you want to go ahead and bet the Ravens money line, it's plus 130. Be my guess. I'm not going to stop you. I do think this Ravens team is going to be really, really good. And hopefully they run the ball this time against the Chiefs. Next, we got the Friday night football game. That sounds weird to say out loud. In Brazil, we have the Green Bay Packers and the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles open as two and a half point favorites. And honestly, that line to me is a little suspect. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I understand the Eagles should be better this year. They have new coaching. They got Saquon Barkley. They address defensive back in the draft. I totally get it. But the last half of the year really left a bad taste in my mouth. And, you know, um, contrarily, that's a word, the Packers were the complete opposite, right? They were not great in the first half of the year and then turned out to be a really, really good football team down the stretch. So um, I think the momentum definitely favors the Packers here. Again, they're getting two and a half points. Um, I'm going to take the Packers plus two and a half. I think that that's a great line. Um, I think that, again, it's a field goal game, which I, I understand. I think the Eagles are maybe better on paper. Um, but Jordan Love had a phenomenal year last year. I'm going to pick the better coach. I'm going to pick probably the better quarterback. I'm going to go Packers plus two and a half here. Then to open up the Sunday slate, we start with the Titans at the Chicago Bears. The Bears actually open as four and a half point favorites in Caleb's debut. And I think the line is pretty appropriate. I'm going to take the Bears minus four and a half. Uh, I do think this Chicago team is better uh, at pretty much every position. Um, you know, obviously we'll have to see what new coach Brian Callahan is going to bring to Tennessee. But I think the Bears pretty much are better across the board, except for interior defensive line, I would say. Um, it is a home game as well. It is, a you know, Caleb's debut. So I, I think this Bears team is going to come out uh, ready to play. They went undefeated in the preseason. Um, which is all we have to really grab to right now. But I think this Bears team is going to come out ready to play. I do think four and a half is a decent number, especially for Caleb's first game when we haven't seen him in quote unquote real action. But I'm going to take it. I'm going to take the Bears minus four and a half here. Next, we got one of the biggest lines of the week. The Patriots go and visit Cincinnati at Paycor Stadium and they're eight and a half point dogs. Now, this is coming off of a few days ago where the Patriots announced that Jacoby Brissett was going to be their starter. I think we all kind of agree he's not their best quarterback. Drake May is, um, but Drake May is going to kind of, you know, redshirt for a little bit here. Listen, there's not much to say about the Patriots. Um, they're not a very good team. They, they really aren't. Eight and a half is a lot, but this Patriots team, you know, you take one look at that depth chart and you you kind of understand why they're getting eight and a half on the road. Um, I, I, like conventional betting wisdom would tell you to take the points you know what I'm saying? It's going to be week one. Maybe Cincinnati's not rolling. Jamar Chase is probably not going to play. He's been, you know, pouting, um, waiting for a new contract. Conventional betting wisdom definitely does tell you to take Patriots plus eight and a half. However, I am not conventional betting wisdom. I'm going to tell you to take the Cincinnati Bengals, a team that is much better on paper. Uh, Joe Burrow, he mentioned it in podcast. You know, he's gotten his offseason to an early start because of the injury. Trust that this Bengals team is going to be able to to play like they they should uh this should be eight and a half i think they probably win by double j this truthfully next we got what i think is a really interesting line the arizona cardinals are going to the buffalo bills and they're six point dogs now 
touchdown line uh, again is a little bit high, and a lot of people would tell you, well, you know, take take the cover, or whatever. I I don't know. I think that Arizona here. This this is very interesting for me though because I don't think Buffalo is maybe as good as some people think. Um, I I flip flop on Buffalo. You know, it's so hard because it's like Josh Allen, the rest of the roster. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's such a hard battle to fight with them. Um, I do think though this Arizona's offense should be very good. Their defense is going to be sus as fuck. Um, I might take the over on points here if you're looking for an over bet. Um, I do like the over 48. I think that could totally cash out for you. But I don't know if this Bills team is good enough right now to justify a touchdown line against a borderline playoff team. I think there may be a half tier below, but the Cardinals could be in there. Again, I think their offense is going to be really, really good. So I'll kind of begrudgingly take uh, Cardinals plus six here. Next, we have the Houston Texans visiting the Indianapolis Colts. The Texans are favored by two and a half. And to me, this is one of the bets of the week. I'm taking the Texans minus two and a half, and I'm taking it pretty easily. Uh, CJ Stroud was phenomenal last year. D'Amico Ryans, Will Anderson, they added Joe Mixon and Stephon Diggs in the offseason, who I think for at least the early part of the year are going to be big difference makers for them. Um, don't get me wrong. I'm still very high on the Colts, and this is a home game for them. Road divisional games are never easy. Um, but I think the Texans are going to be able to easily kind of carry the, their momentum from last year, where I think the Colts, maybe it takes them a few weeks to get their feet wet. Uh, I am taking the Texans minus two and a half. And with a guy like CJ Stroud, I, I do feel pretty good about it. Next, we got the Jaguars visiting the Miami Dolphins. They are three point dogs. They actually were three and a half earlier today. So maybe the line is going a little bit in their favor. Um, I'm probably going to take the Jaguars as well. And this is one of those bets where it's really a coin flip for me. I could I could go either way. I could be easily convinced either way. But I'm going to start by saying good quarterback, getting a field goal line. Uh, Miami, I don't think, is necessarily some great road environment uh, or terrible road environment for visiting teams. I mean, they play in Florida as well. Um, you know, this, this Jaguars offense is looking to get back on track. And, you know, the Dolphins offense... Tyreek's a little banged up. Jalen Waddle's a little banged up. They're still, you know, getting a lot of pieces back for on defense. Like Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb won't be there. Their D-line is going to be really weak. I think the Jaguars will be able to run the ball with Travis Etienne. Um, yeah, give me give me the points for the Jaguars. Give me the plus three. I think they cover here. Next, we got the Pittsburgh Steelers visiting the Atlanta Falcons. Falcons are three-point favorites. And I'm going to take the Falcons here pretty easily. It's a home game. Kirk Cousins' first game. Uh, the Steelers right now are a mess at quarterback. Justin Fields and Russell Wilson, neither one of them look like look like NFL starting quarterbacks in the preseason. Um, Kirk Cousins, I think, was going to bring stability to this Falcons offense. He's going to be able to play point guard, going to distribute the ball to his playmakers. And I really think this Falcons offense is going to have a big year this year. Give me the Falcons at home, minus a field goal. I, I trust it. Next, we have the Carolina Panthers visiting the, the New Orleans Saints. Excuse me. Saints are four-point favorites. Uh, this is one of the easily, you know, one of the worst games of the early slate. I think this is one of the snoozers of week one. Um, give me the Saints minus four, though. Uh, right now, they're just a better team than the uh, the Carolina Panthers. Dave Canales is going to be his first game as Panthers head coach. I think there's going to be a lot of, you know, wrinkles to iron out. Um, I think the Saints, again, they're they're pretty fucking boring. Don't get me wrong, but I do think they 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 cover against the, the Panthers at home here. Next, we got the Minnesota Vikings visiting the New York Giants. Now, the line is actually basically a pick 'em. It's minus one uh, in favor of the Vikings, and I'm going to pick that. Listen, the Vikings, I don't think are going to be very good this year. However, they have a really high end talent, right? Justin Jefferson, uh, Jordan Addison, if he plays, will be really good. Um, you know, they got they got guys on defense. Um, you know, uh, what's his name? Jonathan Grenard. I was thinking, thank you. I was looking for his name. Jonathan Grenard signed. So I think their pass rush is going to be better. Brian, Brian Flores, um, I think is going to be actually the real key to this game because he is going to be able to confuse Daniel Jones into a state of like pure, like panic. Um, I really don't like Daniel Jones as a quarterback. I think even though they're the home team, I don't think the Giants should be favored. The one saving grace for them is their defensive line is nasty and they might force Sam Darnold into some mistakes. But give me the Vikings on the road, minus one point, basically a pick them. G- give me the Vikings with the better head coach. I- I'm riding I'm riding with the Skulls today. Next, we have the Denver Broncos visiting my Seattle Seahawks. Now, I do want to make a quick mention of this. I am going to enforce my rule that I have never enforced, but it's been a rule forever, that I won't bet on the Seahawks. Um, I did a lot last year, and almost every single time, it just 
blow up in my face one way or the other. I'd bet for them, they'd lose. I'd bet against them, they'd win, and I'd be pissed. Like, so rule of thumb, if you're super passionate about one particular team like I am, don't bet on them. Just save your mental health. But speaking purely objectively, this is a six-point line. Seahawks are uh, favorites. Obviously, they're at home. Um, new coaching staff, both offensively and at the head coach position for the Seahawks. The Broncos are rolling out a new quarterback. There's a lot of uncertainty in this game. Uh, six is kind of a high line. Um, however, I do think the Seahawks are probably better on paper. Again, I'm going to let you guys come up to your own conclusions on this one. I am stepping the fuck out of all Seahawks games this year. Um, so do with that information what you will. The Chargers are favored by three points. And yeah, yeah, you can go ahead and feel pretty comfortable taking the Chargers here. Listen, I, I understand the Chargers have not been the most reliable team to bet on in years past. I, I get it. Trust me. I'm one of their victims. But with Jim Harbaugh coming in, I do think he brings some stability. Uh, I think the Raiders are respectfully trash, um, even though their D-line is pretty good. Listen, take the much better quarterback. Take the much better coach at home. You're getting a field goal. Don't, don't sweat this one too much. Don't sweat this one. Next, we got the Cowboys and the Browns. Now, surprisingly, in my, in my opinion, the Browns are actually favored. I know they're at home, but it's it's two and a half points for the Cleveland Browns favored over the Dallas Cowboys. And I'm not even going to take Cowboys plus two and a half. I'm going to take the money line at plus 114. I think that this is one of the bets of the week, truthfully. The Cowboys are a, um, I think, a much, they've been much more successful the last several years. The Browns are a mess at quarterback. Deshaun Watson is terrible. And Dak Prescott, for all of his detractors, is really, really good. They also got the deal done with C.D. Lamb right before the season started. He should be good to go for week one. Micah Parsons is still kicking it. Um, in my opinion, you know, this is one of the lines of the week. So I would, if you, if I were you, I would hammer, and I am you because I'm doing it, I would hammer Cowboys money line at plus 114. Get it while the odds are still in your favor. Next, we have the Washington Commanders going up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Tampa. Tampa is favored by three. I don't know how to feel about this one, man. I, I don't really particularly like the Commanders, but I don't have a lot of confidence in the Buccaneers either. Um, their offensive coordinator has gone, which I think was a huge part of their success on offense. Um, but honestly, like I'd probably still take the Buccaneers like until the Commanders show me kind of what they are. This is one of those feel-it-out games. Like Personally speaking, I'm not betting this one. Because I gotta, I gotta see how you know the Buccaneers are and the Commanders are with Jane Daniels. If I had to gun to my head, I had to pick. I would say, I would say Commanders cover, but I'm not very confident in that. So don't, don't take my word for it. Um, but I, I'll go ahead and say Commanders plus three, I guess. Next we got the Rams visiting the Lions, a rematch of the NFC Wild Card round from last year. Stafford in Detroit once again. It's gonna be a great game, I am sure. Lions are favored by three and a half points. Um, and I think that's fair. I, I think I will take the Lions here. Uh, I think it's pretty simple. The Rams got worse. I think the Lions got better. Lions addressed corner. They filled some needs on the interior defensive line like DJ Reader. And the Rams, you know, they lost Aaron Donald and Raheem Morris. Um, I think that this is a game where the Lions just kind of have too much star power for the Rams to handle. They're too, the Rams are kind of too inexperienced, too youthful. Uh, I think that'll be a challenge for them in this game. Um, I also think Brian Johnson is one of the few... Uh, offensive minds that could probably go band for band with Sean McVay. Not saying he can outband him. I'm just saying, you know, with better players, he can probably score more points. Yeah, I, I like Detroit here, minus three and a half. And then the last game of week one, the Jets go into Monday night against the San Francisco 49ers. Nothing has ever bet against the Jets when they've let off the NFL season on a Monday night primetime game. I'm taking the 49ers here. I don't think the Jets are all worth the hype. I think this line is maybe a little bit low because, you know, of the drama surrounding Brandon Ayuk and Trent Williams and this and that, whatever. Listen, Kyle Shanahan is one of the best coaches in the NFL. Robert Sala used to be his DC. I'm pretty sure he knows his tendencies very well. I think the 49ers as a whole are much better than the Jets. Um, this should be a good game, though. Do not get me wrong. I think the 49ers are, are still one of the powerhouses of the NFC, and I think the Jets are going to try to prove their supremacy here. But it's all going to be for now. So those are my week one picks for the NFL year. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and how many units you're putting on each bet. And before I get out of here, I will hit you with my personal parlay that I'm rocking with for this week. So I am going to go with Packers money line at plus 120. I'm going to go 
Arizona Cardinals plus six at minus 110. And I'm going to go under 51 for the Rams and Lions total. That gets it out to a total of plus 680. Uh, $5 would earn you about 70. So do with this information what you will. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll catch you the next time. Peace out.